This question is asking for us to find the missing x value, the length of AB, the length of BC, and then to answer if point B is the midpoint and to justify our answer. Before I can answer any of these questions, I have to know how to write an equation that relates the pieces of this diagram to a formula that I can use to solve for x. In this diagram, I have the left side of my diagram, the segment from A to B, labeled with this equation, 9x plus 7. I have the right side of my diagram labeled with the equation negative 3x plus 20. I also have the information from my problem here telling me that AC is 39 centimeters long. AC is written with this hat with no arrows that tells me that it's talking about segment AC that starts at A and goes all the way across to C, which if we look at the diagram is the entire segment. So the entire length is 39 centimeters. Now what is missing from this problem is any information about the left and right side of the segment being equal to each other. I have no tick marks here to tell me that the left and the right side are the same length, and there's no statement in the directions that says that segment AB and segment BC are congruent, or that they have equal measure. So what I cannot do is create an equation that sets these two formulas equal to each other. That's not possible because I don't have that information in the problem. What I do know is that I can always take two small pieces and add them together to make the larger piece. And that's how we're going to set up the equation for this problem. The piece on the left, the segment AB, has the equation 9x plus 7. If I take that formula and add it to the formula for the piece on the right, the piece on the right has the formula negative 3x plus 20, if I take those two pieces and add them together, I will get the length of the entire segment, which my problem has told me is 39 centimeters. So I can create the equation that says the left piece plus the right piece equals 39. Now in order to solve this equation, I have to remember what we discussed about simplifying formulas, simplifying equations, and solving equations. So let's begin with simplifying. When we simplify an equation, we follow the order of operations in order as much as we can on each side of the equation one at a time. So if I take a look at the left side of the equation, I'm going to follow the order of operations as best I can. On the left side of the equation, I can see no parentheses, no exponents. I do see multiplication happening. It's invisible. The 9 and the x being side by side means that I have to do 9 times x, but I don't know what x is, so I can't actually do that multiplication. Same thing here, negative 3 times x, I don't know what that is, so I can't do that multiplication. But I do see a lot of addition and subtraction that can happen right now. So we're going to do this addition and subtraction step, and we're going to combine like terms. To find like terms, I look for the pieces in this formula that are counting the same types of things. So this first term, 9x, that's telling me that I'm counting x's, and I have 9 of them. This negative 3x is telling me this is also counting x's, and I have negative 3x's. So if I have 9 things called x and negative 3 things called x, and I combine those, that gives me 9 minus 3. That's 6 things called x. So I've combined the x terms. I also have the number plus 7 and the number plus 20 that are being combined as well. Those are both just counting 1s. So I have 7 1s and 20 1s, and when I add them together, I will get 27 things called 1. So I have 27. So we combined the x terms and the numbers using the order of operations. On the right side of my equation, I can also try to simplify, but there's only one number there, so there's no operations happening. So that side's already simplified and finished. That is the simplifying process. Now that I want to solve for x, which again is my first question here, what is x? I need to get this x value completely alone, which means I need to now start unwrapping the order of operations in the opposite order. This is my solving process. I figure out what operations are happening to x, and then I use the opposite operations in the opposite order to get x alone. When I start unwrapping x, I'm going to have to start doing the same thing to both sides of the equation to make it balanced. So let's go ahead and figure out what's happening to x. 
on the screen up here, I see that x is being multiplied by 6. And according to my uh, order of operations, that would happen first. Then I can see that we add 27. And according to my order of operations, that would happen second. So first I would multiply, then I would add. When I unwrap these steps, I have to go in the opposite order. So I have to start at the bottom and undo that addition. So instead of adding 27, I'll undo that by subtracting 27. And I'll keep my equation balanced by doing that to both sides. The plus 27 and minus 27 on the left will disappear, and I'll just have the 6x. On the right, I have to do 39 minus 27, which is 12. Now we've taken care of that addition step. Now I can take care of the multiplication step. So x is being multiplied by 6. I need to undo that process. And I'm going to do that by dividing both sides by 6. When I divide both sides by 6, the x next to the 6 will cancel, so x is going to be alone. And on the right, 12 divided by 6 is 2. So I have just solved for x. I created an equation that said that the two pieces add together to become the total length. I simplified the left side of my equation using the order of operations. And then I unwrapped x using the opposite operations in the opposite order. Now my job is to answer the next two questions. So my next question says, what is AB? And we said that AB was this left piece, and it has this equation, 9x plus 7. This equation means that if I know what x is, I can multiply that number by 9 and then add the number 7 to find the length of this piece. And now I know what x is. So to find the length of AB, I can take my x value, which is 2, multiply it by 9, and then add 7. So if x is 2, 9 times 7 is 18, and then I add another 7, oh sorry, 9 times 2 is 18, I add another 7 to get the AB value of 25. And we're measuring in centimeters, so 25 centimeters. That means that the left side of my line segment is 25 centimeters. Now we can do the same thing to find the length of BC. It says that if I know what x is, I can multiply it by negative 3, and then I can add the number 20 to find out what the length of the segment is. So to find BC, I'm going to do negative 3 times the x value we found, which is the number 2, and then I can add the number 20 to find the length of that segment. So if I start with my multiplication, negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. That's the number I add 22 to finish the problem. I get the number 14, and again, I'm counting centimeters. That means that the right side of my line segment up here is 14 centimeters. My last question asks, is B the midpoint? And it asks to explain our answer here, to justify our answer. So a midpoint means that it's cut in perfect half. It's fair. The left and the right side have to be exactly the same. In the picture, it looked like this might be the midpoint, but if I look at the values, the left side is 25, the right side is 14. That means the left side is almost twice as big as the right side. It doesn't show it in the picture, but the numbers tell us that that is true. So since the left side is so much bigger than the right side, that means this segment has not been perfectly cut in half. The left side's bigger. So our answer is no, this is not the midpoint. The midpoint has to cut things in half. And my justification, my explanation, can say one of those things. It can say the left side is too big. It can say the right side is too small. I can say the left and the right side are not equal to each other. Segment AB is not congruent to segment BC. However I want to state that, I can write a sentence explaining. And your test tomorrow will have an answer choice that you can choose that's multiple choice that explains the midpoint has to have the same number on the left and the right in order for the point in the middle to be the midpoint. So you can explain that in your own words however you'd like.